Whether you are a new player or a seasoned vet in Warpath, we all have to make the decision on which units to prioritize from each camp. You've got Liberty, Vanguard, and Martyrs. All of them have really unique, really good units, but there's some that stand out a little bit more than the others in each of those camps, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back guys, I appreciate you guys coming back to hang out with me for another video today. We are going to talk about what my opinion is on the three best units from each camp, Liberty, Vanguard, and Martyrs. This is an opinion-based video, but I'm going to give you guys some supporting points on why I think each of these three units are the top premier unit in each one of these respective camps. And then if you guys have any disagreements, if you guys have different opinions or thoughts, let me know in the comment below. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into Liberty to start. Starting off here in the Liberty camp, we are going to go with the Liberty Howitzer. Some of you guys might give me some criticism for this. Some of you guys might disagree with me. If you do, let me know why. But for me, the Liberty Howitzer is going to take the top spot out of the Liberty camp for a couple of different reasons. Um, one of the main ones is because the developers have came out and said in the past, that their goal is to push as much open field fighting as possible. They find that that is what the community as a whole wants more than base defense. Obviously, we all enjoy, or I would say most of us enjoy, um, being able to you know, defend our base, being able to farm some kills, things like that. That's always fun, and that is definitely an aspect that is in the game. But the reason I'm going with the Liberty Howitzer is because it fills both of those roles, both defending your base and open field fighting, whether you're in an army group or just individually controlling your unit, it's going to fill both of those roles, and it's going to fill, it, fill them both really, really well. If you guys have not seen my past video where I compared directly side by side the Liberty Howitzer and the Martyrs Howitzer, I definitely would suggest you guys taking a look at that video. Um, we go in depth with some of the statistics and compare side by side, so that might be very helpful for you guys if you have not seen that. But a quick overview comparing the two of them, the Liberty Howitzer is going to offer a couple of advantages that you won't get from the Martyr's Howitzer. Number one is the reload speed. It is noticeably faster um, in terms of reload speed than the Martyr's Howitzer. The Martyr's Howitzer is geared more towards, at least on paper, it's geared more towards damage dealt to enemy units, which is great. But it's got a really slow reload time compared to the Liberty Howitzer. And also, the Liberty Howitzer is going to have a 50% more fortification damage boost. The Martyr's Howitzer has a 250% fortification damage boost, and the Liberty Howitzer has a 300% fortification damage boost. So you're going to get 50 extra percent against fortifications, which is going to play really well if you're in a one-on-one -on -one base to base situation. If you're sending units out to an already army group, you're going to be able to have an advantage there or give your alliance an advantage by being able to kill bases at a quicker rate with that extra little boost you get from the Liberty camp. And again, ultimately, whether you're talking base defense, army group, open field fighting, targeting units in the field, whatever it is, that autumn, that that much faster reload speed is going to give you such an advantage because the more shots you get off, the more damage you're ultimately going to be able to deal. So that right there is the absolute top reason that the Liberty Howitzer is going to take the spot at the top for the Liberty camp. It offers so much for so many different roles. For the Vanguard camp, my vote has to be for the ATG, the anti-tank gun. You could make a case very easily for the Vanguard fighter being the top unit in the camp. You could make a case depending on your play style. More early game, once you get into later game, conquest events, modern units, the super heavy kind of fizzles out a little bit. It's not as useful, it's not as relevant. But early game, you could make a case that the Super Heavy is a really good unit or a top-end unit for the Vanguard camp. You could make a case that the Tank Hunter slash Helicopter is really good, that the Medium slash Main Battle Tank is really good. Again, it's one of those camps that has got some really good units, but it also is a camp that is geared for some really specific purposes. Um, and one of those purposes is the ATG, the anti-tank gun. The Vanguard camp is the only camp that has an anti-tank gun unit on it. 
and it is modeled after the Flak 88 in real life. There is no other camp, Liberty or Martyrs, that has an anti-tank gun. Vanguard is the only one, and that is why, because it is unique to that camp, that I'm going to put it into the top spot. Because even though, like, for example, the Vanguard Fighter's great, you can also get a Liberty Fighter. You can also get a Martyrs Fighter, but you cannot get a Liberty or a Martyrs anti-tank gun. So it's going to slide into the top spot for Vanguard. Also, if you look at the dynamic of the game, it doesn't matter if you're early game, late game, whatever phase of this game and your development you're in, anytime your base is attacked, almost always, if you're facing anybody with any kind of common sense knowledge of the game, they're always going to start the base attack with a tank of some form, whether it's a super heavy, an MBT, or a medium tank, in some cases a helicopter if that's all they've got around, but it is going to be generally a tank of some form, and that is where the anti-tank gun really plays to your benefit because it is geared for penetration. It is geared for targeting armor and penetrating armor, and it's going to be able to absolutely chew through tank units that attack your base, and the faster that you can get through those tank units, the faster that your base will start to auto-target other units, potentially already, which die very quickly, which means you're able to bleed the reserves of enemies, and you're able to farm more kills. So the anti-tank gun is an absolute must, in my opinion, for anybody that is going to have any kind of relevance on base defense. For the Martyrs camp, the bomber is going to take the top spot. Here is why. Sure, you can get bombers from each other camp. You can get bombers in Liberty, bombers in Vanguard. They all play their own role. However, similar to the anti-tank gun that was taking the top spot for Vanguard because it targeted tanks, the same thing for this Martyrs bomber. When you look at the dynamic of field fighting right now, the vast majority of units on the field are going to be tank units of some form, whether it's light tanks, main battle tanks, helicopters, whatever it may be, the predominant unit type on the field is going to be a tank unit of some form. And that is where the Martyr's Bomber specialty is. It is geared towards targeting tank units. The Vanguard Bomber is geared more towards artillery units. It does okay against tank units, but it's vastly, vastly underpowered compared to the Martyr's Bomber against tank units. The Liberty Bomber is geared more towards uh, bases or fortification damage, and it's not got a tracking capability. It's kind of just a big area, if you will, uh, area with X amount of grids that it bombs. But if anything's not in that grid range, then it doesn't get hit. It doesn't take damage. But the Martyr's Bomber is a tracker bomber, meaning it locks on, and no matter where that unit goes, with the exception of it going into somebody's base, it will track it, and it will continue to attack it. The other issue is, and why it is, to, in my opinion, the best bomber out of the three camps, as, and a lot of people like the Vanguard Bomber, but the reason I advise against the Vanguard Bomber is not because it is not a good bomber, but the idea of the Vanguard Bomber is geared towards attacking, attacking artillery. But what is almost always, always hovering over the top of artillery units? That would be fighter planes. Most of the time, most alliances do not do a great job of giving their tank army groups air coverage. They prioritize air coverage over their artillery units, and so you don't want to fly a bomber into a swarm of fighters, all right? But most alliances do not prioritize air support or air cover for their tank groups because tanks are just, generally speaking, more durable. They're able to take a little bit more of a beating, and people don't necessarily think that their, their tanks are going to get targeted as much as their weak artillery or rocket launcher units out in the field. But the Martyr's Bomber does a really good job of dealing a lot of damage and to be able to rack up a lot of kills, ultimately bleeding the enemy out of reserves and getting your alliance the advantage, and it also breaks down army groups. There are alliances now that are prioritizing Martyr's Bombers to break up all of these army groups. The field fighting and the tank units on the field have vastly, have vastly taken over, and that is the dominant unit, even over artillery units. Even though artillery units are making a little bit of a comeback now, tank units still absolutely dominate in the field in terms of just sheer volume. So to counter that, you've got to have a unit that can target those tanks specifically and that's geared towards damaging that armor. And that is where the Martyr's Bomber takes the spot for the Martyr's Camp.
That's going to wrap us up for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys agree with my three picks here today. If you guys disagree, if you do disagree, give me your thoughts as to why. I would love to hear what you guys think. Again, this is more of an opinion-based video, but it's an opinion-based video with some supporting facts and evidence. So if you guys have different perspectives, different thoughts, different ideas, let me know in the comments below. Let me know why as well. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think. Those are my top three picks, though, for the best unit out of each camp. So if you're struggling to decide which unit you should prioritize or make from each camp, hopefully this video will help you out. If you guys did enjoy this video, did find some value out of this video, please consider hitting the like button on this video and the subscribe button as both of those things help the channel out tremendously. And then as always, if you guys have access to Discord and are not already in the community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video below. Go ahead and click on that. Come over, join the server. We would love to have you guys over there to be a part of it and hang out. With that being said, guys, I appreciate it, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.